Okay, just kind of picking up where we left off, part two of the uh, VAMP tutorial. So, recall that we had this complex scene, and if we run VAMP on it, we can get this sort of outline. And again, I've turned off the cropping just for this. Turn off the cropping. And I've got the freestyle mode increases turned off and individual silhouette mode turned on. Now, something I want to draw your attention to is some of these lines sort of are incomplete. Let's kind of exaggerate that here. Turn off calling once. See, for some of these sort of complex scenes that get these cutoffs, especially if there's an overhang where, where this edge was extending back under here, but because there's this overhang, it got clipped off. And because the way VAMP works, it's really just taking existing edges, subdividing them, testing both ends of that edge. If, it, if it's visible, it leaves it in. If either edge, either, excuse me, end of the edge is invisible or occluded, it removes it. And that's how you end up with this, this scene. It is imperfect though. And again, that's just the nature of VAMP. You can, you can increase cuts per edge sort of increase the complexity of the calculation and you improve that, but it's never perfect. Um, something that Blender released just with the latest version of Blender, Blender 2.93, is a feature for their grease pencil tool and it's called Line Art. And it's a very powerful tool. Line Art, grease pencil Line Art does a lot of what VAMP does and does it better and faster. And so because of this, um, I built in a feature where VAMP can take advantage of the grease pencil line art calculations that Blender's already doing. So for a direct comparison, let's switch this over to freestyle mode with creases. Go and VAMP again. You have this the outline. You've got the sort of sharp edges shown, and you've got these the marked edges in this sphere object. This is so this is the comparison view that we're about to get. So let me hide that for now. We'll go back to this, the original objects, and the way to use the grease pencil line art tool is to go into the add menu, grease pencil, scene, collection, or object line art. I'm going to choose collection. And right away, you can even see that Blender is giving you nearly the identical scene that we had calculated with VAMP almost immediately. And note that the lines are perfect. They go right to the edge. They don't go further. They're not short. They don't overlap. Again, this is Blender doing the calculation that VAMP's been trying to do. And Blender's finally released it as a feature. This is terrific. Now, in order to use this the way we want to use it with OSCE Studio, we need to do a little remapping, and that's what VAMP can do now. So um, let's, uh, let's repeat this around. This uh, There you go. So the line art updates as you go. There's something to keep in mind though. If you hide something, line art loses track of it. Okay. And that's important for a later step we're going to take. But I just wanted to show you that in action. Line art recalculates each time you change the frame. But if you drop out the object from the visible scene, line art drops it out as well. So there's a, a step in line art is called baking. And if you have a complex scene like this one, and you've got animations that you want to follow, um, it's important that you take the step to bake the line art because we're going to hide away the line art. Um, VAMP requires it. It's set up to require it. And the whole point is so that you can hide everything and still get the results into VAMP. See, these are really nice graphics that it's showing. Okay, so let's go through the steps. Say we want to take this 
grease pencil line art and push it into vamp well first thing to do right now this line art is included in the vamp input we need to correct that line art vamp input is a set of original mesh data line art is kind of an intermediary object so i'm actually going to pull it out of the vamp input collection and it's here's something to take into account is is if you go into line art go to the modifier tab for line art this is basically when you say add or that step we did a minute ago you say add grease pencil collection line art what you're telling blender is set up a grease pencil object add this line art modifier, set up some materials. It kind of does all these basic steps. You can do this by hand, but this is a very nice feature that sets it all up automatically. The source collection, this is important. Sometimes the source collection will not be the one you want. So you need to make sure that, the, as we did with VAMP, you need to tell Grease Pencil line art, this, these are the objects I want you to draw line art from. I'm going to say the same we had before vamp input right there we go and now you can see it draws it right away um, another thing that's kind of neat is you can actually decide what kind of lines you want to include contour is the outer edges edge marks is these sort of uh, the freestyle edge marks recall these were sort of highlighted in green in this object itself Creases, these are sharp corners. Same kind of concept as we had done before. Include or exclude them. So there's lots of really neat features in here. Play with this a lot. Interestingly, a lot of these features are very similar to the ones we had built into VAMP originally. You know, sort of crease detection, edge detection. Um, but again, far more efficient using it this way. Okay. So Scrub the animation to make sure that what you want included in the line art is included. There's nothing extraneous. This is important to kind of do by hand just to make sure you're in good shape. Once you're confident that it's in good shape, again, in the line art object, in the line art modifier, very bottom, baking. So this gives you the option to bake the line art. Basically, it will go through the animation each frame it will generate the line art that's in effect in that frame and it will store it. And what that means is later you can hide the original meshes and you'll still be able to see the art. So I'm going to run the bake now. It shouldn't take too long. Again, this is a very simple animation and Blender is very fast. So right away, objects. And now we can see that the line art is visible isn't that nice and clean these nice clean edges nice crisp intersections nothing overlapping no gaps it's really terrific okay that's what we wanted now the last step is to get this line art results into vamp so that we can remap it to the flat surface and the way we do that again we need to put this object into another collection so that VAMP can see it. Now, this VAMP input's already sort of taken up. So we're going to call this GP, GP output. Okay. GP output. It's the collection. Went to VAMP. We'll tell VAMP to use that. Instead of using the original objects, it's going to use this line art now as its source. And because of this is already just edges, there's no faces, there's, there's just edges. So some of these options in VAMP are really not relevant anymore. Um, creases, you know, there's, no, there's no faces, so there's no edge angles, for instance. Freestyle markings, those have gone away because now we've got a new set of data. Um, individual silhouette mode it's going to moot um let's see if we can get this to work okay so vamp output that's where our location 
B. So what? And there we go. Here's the vamp version of that same data. Now it's available up down. You can part it out into other applications. Okay. So this is how you get data into vamp from Grease Pencil. And again, Grease Pencil is standing in for some of the calculations that VAMP was already doing, but it's far faster, far better results. It really opens up some neat opportunities. Um, you can do some beautiful sort of curves that VAMP would really struggle with, um, kind of high density source meshes, stuff like that. Um, so this uh, sort of line art feature in Blender, I think opens up some great possibilities for uh, using it with VAMP. Um, because we baked the grease pencil data, it's available and sort of all of the frames are available. So, off to top down. If we turn on vamp, okay. So sometimes, um, vamps the turn on vamp feature will not work and it it's it just has to do with the um, application handlers getting out of order and so the thing to do is click reload script and all that does is unload and reload vamp and resets the application handlers handlers then typically that solves that problem let's double check here okay so now I've got VAMP turned on, and what that's telling VAMP is run automatically each time you change frames. So as I change frames, manually scrubbing through it here. Camera. And if we play it, you can see that the, the sort of VAMP results are looking nice and crisp. Another thing to speed up VAMP, Again, the, the data we're getting is sort of, is ready for us, is complete, so we don't need to do much subdividing. We pull this back to two. It's gonna do far less calculations than it might've, and so we're gonna have this nice, speedy animation. Okay, so the very last thing, um, kind of go through the steps of, now, now that we have the input data, animation working properly, the output animation working properly. Last step is to get this over to OSCE Studio. I've got OSCE Studio running in the background. I have the audio turned all the way down because it's noisy. <laughs> but go through the connection steps so you can see how this works. The way OSCE Studio, the OSCE Studio add-in is turned on in Blender. If that's not working for you, I recommend you get that working before you try to use it with VAMP. These are <laughs> it's a little brittle, so make sure that part's nice and stable for you. But OSCE Studio Global Settings, make sure the port numbers agree, and click Connect. So now I've got a connection. It's in this connection screen. And then automatically send when blend file changes. Turn this on. Okay, and now we have our scene. And because this is, um, it is 270 verts, not too many. It's having a little trouble kind of drawing it perfectly in the amount of time it's got. Let's give it a little more time by reducing the frequency. It's nice and crisp. Now we can scrub, scrub the uh, wheel here. This way is screen. It's looking pretty fresh. Okay. So once you see that the different frames are being picked up, all right. Last step is to send the animation to Hosky Studio. It's this step here. Now, 
I'll click send. It'll start rolling through this animation. It's sending frame by frame. So here's how you can tell when it's working. <laughs> First is there's a window in Blender. It's the system console window. See, it's kind of uh, chunking away. It's thinking. This is some of this is vamp notices. Some of it is um, OSCE Studio notices. But basically, this is a log. You can see things are progressing. Now it's done. It says send this many bytes. That's sort of OSCE Studio mention. There, so I can tell it's done sending. It'll freeze for a moment. This scene will freeze and it won't look like it's updating. And then it will come back to this sort of wiggly, quivering kind of version. Watch it when it freezes. Wait till for it to come back before you try to interact with it because if you try too early, you can crash things. But once it's here, it's out of the way. This is the Time is basically the frame count inside of Aussie Studio. You can see that uh, C is looking pretty good over there now. All right, we had a good send. I usually, at this point, once I know the animation's moved over, I usually dis disconnect because there's no more need for Blender to be connected to. OSCE Studio, and uh, you can do a quick, add a quick envelope to the animation. Take this. All right. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, the OSCE Studio sound is okay. Should listen to it. But it's not very musical yet. It's, uh, that's next. Anywho, um, I hope this has been helpful for folks seeing how VAMP works with OSCE Studio and how to, how to use the new Grease Pencil feature in, in Blender. I think it's really powerful. I think it's gonna open some great possibilities and really uh, looking forward to kind of putting it through its places. If you have any questions about this, um, please let me know. Again, this is, uh, this is kind of a new release of this. If you give it a try, it's not working for you, hit me up either here or on one of the forums. I was really kind of trying to make this tool for myself, but really would like other people to be able to use it uh, successfully as well. So do let me know how that goes. And uh, the last thing I'd like to cover in a separate tutorial is one more feature in VAMP. It's called the Trace feature. And that's one I rolled out a while ago. I haven't done a tutorial on it yet, but that's still on my to-do list. That's coming up soon. Anyways, uh, for now, thanks. Y'all have a good day.